hey, you see this number? Look at it. Look at how fucking big it is. Look at how meaty and juicy and... Uh, do you want to know how to get your number as big as that? No? Not, not in the least? Then why the fuck are you here? The Beggar's Bazooka is the best rocket launcher in MVM. And honestly, I don't think your average MVM player truly understands the scope of just how much better this weapon is. Despite its reputation as a meta-defining weapon, I actually find a lot of players shelving it in MVM in favor of other, less optimal rocket launchers. And I think that stems from how this weapon works in casual. The Beggar's has one of the most acquired tastes of any weapon in the game. It's very much a love it or hate it kind of thing. And out of my over 8,000 hours on TF2, I've used the Beggar's Bazooka for maybe 30 minutes? Yeah, that tells you everything about what camp I'm personally in. So I'll admit my preconceived opinions on how this weapon usually works did influence my decision to not use it in MVM for the longest time. But as my goals shifted towards wanting to be more competent, the more I gravitated towards the traditional top tier weapons that would allow me to become that better player. And holy shit, I've never had my preconceptions on any weapon in TF2 absolutely smashed, quite like what MDM did for me with the Beggar's Bazooka. So that's what I want to talk about today, because whether you're a low tour newbie or a high tour degen, there's always a chance you're not using the Beggar's, and I'm here to explain why you should. So first, let's take a look at the weapon stats. By default, the Beggar's Bazooka allows you to load up three rockets at once before having to unload them, but this comes with some pretty harsh penalties to compensate. A 20% smaller explosion radius, not being able to get any metal from dispensers while holding the weapon out, and the biggest of them all, the insane accuracy nerf. I, I mean, I mean, look at this shit. Bruh. You're better off trying to make toast in the dark than hit anything from range with this thing. It gets more consistent the closer you are to your target, but even at close range you'll still miss quite a fair bit through no fault of your own. It is the most RNG based rocket launcher in the game, and that definitely does not assure confidence in the Beggar's Bazooka's abilities to actually perform well, until you learn about its hidden stat. One little trip to the TF2 wiki and you will find that the Beggar's Bazooka has a 7 70% faster firing speed than any other rocket launcher in the game. The standard rocket launcher firing speed is 0.8 seconds per rocket, but the Beggar's Bazooka is the only rocket launcher to have a firing speed of 0.24 seconds. Now, obviously the Beggar's doesn't fire 4 rockets every second, and this is because it reloads before firing instead of after. The standard across all the other rocket launchers for the first rocket once the entire clip has been used is 0.92 seconds. But because they gave the beggars such a quick firing speed, they needed to balance it out by pouring most of that downtime into the reload speed, about 1.2 seconds. So the stock rocket launcher takes 1.72 seconds to fire and reload a rocket, while the beggars takes 1.44 seconds. So already in terms of pure firing speed, the beggars comes out on top. But is that really enough to justify... this? Well, on its own, probably not, but this is where we're gonna roll out the elementary school textbooks and do some quick math. The stock rocket launcher has an almost 50-50 split between the time it takes to reload and the time it takes to fire. The beggars, on the other hand, is very heavily skewed towards the reload speed. Now, in regular TF2, this normally doesn't make a difference. Same baloney, different bread. But MVM has new variables to consider in the form of upgrades, specifically, these two. As you can see, these modifiers aren't flat number increases, they're percentages. Therefore, they stack in accordance with each weapon's respective stats. Let's take a look at stock. The maximum firing speed upgrade is 40% and costs 800 credits. This knocks off about a third of a second off each individual rocket, bringing the firing speed down to 0.48 seconds. For the beggars, the max firing speed only knocks off 0.096 seconds. So the firing speed upgrade scales negatively with the Beggar's Bazooka, but now let's look at the reload speed. The maximum reload speed upgrade costs 750 credits and decreases reload time by 60%. For the stock rocket launcher, this takes off about 0.55 seconds per rocket reloaded, bringing the reload speed down to 0.37 seconds. For the Beggar's on the other hand, the max reload speed knocks off a whopping 0.72 seconds per rocket. Because the Beggar's had an increase 
increased reload speed to begin with compared to the other rocket launchers, this increases the weapon's sustained DPS by 100%. Yep, 100%. In other words, for just 750 credits, you double the rate of fire on a weapon that already fires faster than every other rocket launcher in the game and has a bottomless clip. To put that into perspective, even with maximum reload and maximum firing speed upgrades, the stock rocket launcher will still only reload and fire a rocket once every 0.85 seconds compared to the beggar's 0.72. So not only do you still fire more rockets than stock, but you save 800 credits in the process. And where does that money go? Exactly. Anyways, that was a lot of numbers and calculations and bullshit, so here's something that needs less explaining. Now, let me explicitly state something that many of you have probably inferred from the footage already. The most effective way to achieve high DPS with the beggars is by tap firing, also known as, well. That being said, loading up a shitload of rockets and then spewing them out like a 12 year old Apex player who just learned a new racial slur does have its moments. Let me demonstrate. With every other rocket launcher, there are typically three scenarios where you're holding off on shooting any robots. Those being waiting for robots to drop off the edge, waiting for any of your medic picking classes to do the job, and the obvious one of robots just not being in your line of sight. But what the beggars allows you to do is prematurely charge up a barrage of rockets while you're unable to attack and shoot out the entire load whenever you can. Whereas with every other rocket launcher, you're sitting there, waiting not doing any damage. This becomes even more potent on later waves when you have more money for clip size upgrades, which can allow the soldier to load up to 11 rockets at once and decimate any group of robots in the game. When combined with the crit canteen, this rivals a decked out Scottish resistance in terms of burst damage and allows soldiers to completely obliterate giants and swarms of small robots all by himself. This is an ability no other rocket launcher in the game can match, barring the airstrike with the base jumper. But even then, an airstrike soldier has to constantly reload every time he shoves the whole clip in the robot's mouth, and you have to give up a banner just to stay in the air long enough to do so. The Beggars does not have that problem, and in fact, it takes the airstrike's issue of discouraging the use of a banner and flips it on its head. If you watched my Soldier MBM tier list, you would know that I think pretty highly of all three banners in the game. They are definitely Soldier's best secondaries when it comes to MBM, but they do have a kind of underlying penalty to them. As a Soldier, you typically have an order of priority when it comes to what you should be doing during your periods of downtime. Your first priority should be reloading your rocket launcher back to full, and your second priority would be popping a banner if it is available. You could also throw in a whip from the disciplinary action if your rockets and buffs are good to go, but for the sake of this video, let's just focus on the first two. Point is, as soldier, you're constantly juggling reloading and using banners whenever you're not attacking, and there will be many cases where you're only able to do one of those two things, leaving your banner left unused or your rocket launcher left unloaded. But because the beggar's bazooka doesn't need to be reloaded in a traditional way, that first priority gets completely wiped and replaced with a new one, getting ammo. Staying topped off as a beggar's soldier is insanely important because 20 rockets come and go in less than 15 seconds with max reload speed. But I think you all remember this little bit of red text. This makes the beggars unable to get ammo while simultaneously leeching off a dispenser. Instead, the soldier has to switch to another weapon to get ammo, and I think you see where this is going. You can't reload and use a banner at the same time, but you sure can get ammo while using it, so this turns what would normally be two separate priorities into one singular priority 
where both effects are accomplished at the same time. So although it is really annoying not having infinite ammo from a dispenser, it promotes a style of play where you're constantly throwing out buffs for you and your team. A tactic not only effective, but also more fun. In my opinion, the conch definitely reigns supreme as the best banner when using the beggar's bazooka. Because of how close you have to be to the robots to offset the accuracy penalty, you'll be taking far more damage than you otherwise would be. So the health on hit, the added speed boost, and the passive health regen all do wonders for your survivability. It also allows the soldier to act as a one-man army on some portions of the missions, where typically you'd require two or more mercs in order to kill everything efficiently. And again, this only becomes amplified on later waves. The more damage you do, the more of a tank you will become. Speaking of which... You can't mention the beggars without talking about this thing's absurd tank busting abilities. Although Pyro is typically seen as the best at the job, Soldier matches up very well against Pyro in terms of sustained DPS. He just usually doesn't have the ammo pool to keep up. But in the absence of a Pyro, a beggar's soldier will be your best bet for the team, and can oftentimes completely solo the tank all by himself. Not needing to reload allows Soldier to constantly blow buff banners and have mini crits whenever he pleases, without having to sacrifice more DPS than he otherwise would. So the Beggars allow Soldier to deal with every single offensive threat in the game with a level of effectiveness far beyond his usual primaries. But as I mentioned, the Beggars isn't used nearly as much as every other meta-defining weapon. Part of that is the negative bias that players have from using it in casual, but I think there's another, probably bigger reason reason as to why it's not used that much. Let's start with the obvious. This weapon destroys your ability to play from range. This makes a lot of soldiers safe spots that he has access to completely unviable with the beggars, so you're reliant on your team not getting too overwhelmed in order to do well. This also makes it far more difficult to kill snipers from a distance, and that can be incredibly annoying. You're now a low to mid-range combat class, so you need to rely on some new positioning that you typically wouldn't use on soldier. Your general game plan will tend to err on the side of being closer to the robots, and this does make you more susceptible to damage and getting aggro. In order for this to be negligible, you have to do a lot of strafing and pick your fights accordingly. And another big thing you need to get used to is being more reliant on ammo and having less wiggle room for when and how you get it. Having a good Angie who understands proper building placements and who won't lag behind on rebuilding his dispenser is borderline essential for this weapon to function. To put it simply, if your NG sucks ass, you're gonna have a bad time. But that's about it. I'm not denying those aren't hurdles that don't take some getting used to, they definitely do. But if you haven't given the Beggar's Bazooka an honest chance at MVM and you care about getting better at the game, I would highly recommend you try it because it is an absolute game changer. But you know what else is a game changer? Not for MVM, but for me. Liking the video and subscribing to the channel for more MVM related content. And while you're at it, comment some dumb shit below to help with the YouTube algorithm. That's all I got guys, thank you for watching the video, see ya.